So welcome back. Um, this session on uh, creating an open climate for entrepreneurship will be chaired by my good friend, uh, Georg Greve. Uh, and I'll, I think I'll use the trick that, uh, that Tony Cornford uh, used in the, in the last uh, session, where I invite you to look at um, the official bio that we have uh, of the speakers. And um, I can just say that um, Georg is one of those people that you, you really don't know how he manages to, to do it all. In addition to all that's mentioned here, you know, he has uh, one-year-old twins, he bakes uh, sourdough bread, uh, all these things. You know, you could easily hate him if he, were, he wasn't so nice. So um, we've also asked, because we originally had uh, four speakers on this panel, um, I have asked uh, Georg to go beyond his role uh, as a moderator and also share some of his experiences um, since they are relevant to, the, to this session as well. So, um, Georg? Thank you, Sachiko. Actually, um, when you asked me to um, to say a few words from like a personal perspective as a lead into the whole entrepreneurship section. Um, and I foolishly said yes immediately. Um, I didn't realize that actually the whole reflection about what all of this means to me would give me a bit of a sleepless night, which it did, in fact. Um, but um, I've tried to kind of put together some of the thoughts of what to me um, make it special or what is, what is special about entrepreneurship as a lead-in for our extraordinary speakers um, today. And in fact, I'm very much looking forward to hearing their individual perspectives. Um, the part for me about being an entrepreneur is that actually I didn't realize I was one until, I don't know, fairly recently actually. Um, and that maybe has to do with the fact that when I grew up, I never wanted to be a manager. You know, like somehow I hadn't quite that distinction down, what is different between managers and entrepreneurs, and somehow it all looked like managers to me, and that is something I did not, did not want to do because the pure maximization of, of money did not seem to be a worthwhile goal to pursue in life. Um, so, you know, that alone, I mean, yes, money is nice, it solves many problems, it makes for a convenient lifestyle if you have it, all of that is true, but it's not a goal in life. So the difference for me, why I now consider myself an entrepreneur, is that I understand entrepreneurship to actually be about a whole set of different values. Um, the first thing that to me characterizes the entrepreneur is what you would call the plunge. Um, you know, if you actually want to start something meaningful, um, you actually have to Go for it in the sense of really, really dedicate yourself to this thing, which is an experience that I made when I started the Free Software Foundation Europe. Um, I mean, being a physicist, um, having a, um, in fact, master's in um, physics, biophysics, I did my diploma thesis leading up to a PhD position in a nanotechnology lab that was just being um, built up. And um, I actually turned my back on all of that because I felt that there was a greater calling in a way in building something that was important and that actually had value to me, which was the Free Software Foundation Europe, which is an organization that I felt had to exist but didn't, and I didn't see anyone else doing it. So I, you know, I took the plunge, you know, both in career options as well as um, in personal finance. I mean, the whole endeavor left me rather in the red, to be honest, um, which I recovered later through other activities. But this was really the whole thing of, you know, I'm going to create something that's worthwhile. And that, to me, actually, is the hallmark of the true entrepreneur. It is the passion for what you're doing. In every single entrepreneur that I have seen over the course of um, the years now, they all share an intensive passion for what they do. It is not just a job, because frankly, starting something like this is a whole lot of work. I mean, you end up working 12, 13 hours, seven days a week. I had years where I was home for less than 100 days. You know, it's a lot of work. 
You don't do that lightly. It's not just for the money. You do it because you actually believe in this. You want to make a difference in something. You believe in the necessity of what you are actually doing. And it's about rising to the challenge that you have set for yourself, which characterizes to me very much what entrepreneurs are about. We try to somehow make a change for the better, which however way you define better for yourself, that's your own personal calling, but in the end, it's about making that change. And this reminded me of a quote, in fact, when I was tossing and turning last night, um, that has always inspired me and actually characterizes some of this, um, which is by George Bernard Shaw, where the reasonable man adapts himself to the world, the unreasonable man persists in trying to adapt the world to himself, Therefore, all progress depends on the un unreasonable man. And, you know, obviously it's unreasonable men and women. Um, I mean, I guess those were the days where, you know, people were not paying that much attention to those details. But in the end, entrepreneurs are unreasonable in the best possible sense. Um, and to some extent, it is unreasonable what we do. I mean, I started a company with a wife pregnant with twins um, simultaneously. I knew this would be hell to pay in terms of time. Um, but, you know, you go for it anyway. I mean, in fact, it's unreasonable to start an IT business at all today, in a way. Um, starting an IT business is really, really unreasonable because if you know, if you succeed, Someone can come and just destroy it all because of software patents, for instance. We all know doing software makes you vulnerable to software patents, period. It's not about whether you're vulnerable. It's about whether you have enough to take, whether someone is going to come or not. That's the question. It's not the question of whether you're vulnerable, whether you can be sued. In fact, just the threat of a lawsuit is often enough to deter your customers. So yes, it's totally unreasonable to start a business in this field these days. It's actually totally unreasonable to do so. Yet the entrepreneur chooses to do so. And the question, therefore, of this session to me is, how do we encourage the people that are so unreasonable? How do we create an environment in which their unreason can really bear fruit for society? That is what this session is about to me. Um, and we're going to have three excellent perspectives here on that. We have, you know, three gloriously unreasonable people here, um, each of them succeeding in their own way as an entrepreneur, in fact, serial entrepreneurs, in fact. And um, so Fabian is going to start off with the perspective of how he started the open ERP business and um, how it is actually also possible to make money from free software. So he's a answering one very important question that I got asked in my previous job many times. Um, and we're then going to go over to um, Laura, who's going to give us a bit of the systematic perspective of how does all of this tie together on a social level? How is this systematically related? How do we address or not address the right priorities? And um, we're going to then go to Chris, who's going to show us how through entrepreneurial activity, a new field for entrepreneurs is actually created. And um, so I'm very much looking forward to all three presentations. And um, please, uh, Fabian, if you will, you're up next. <laughs>